After this video, you should have a good understanding on what functional interfaces are and what they mean for Java. You should also be able to leverage these to make some fantastic and flexible code. Howdy hackers and homies, welcome to A Hot Cup of Java. I'm your host, Lexi, a full stack engineer with a specialty in Java. Today we'll be talking about functional interfaces, a famous introduction to the Java language that created a whole world of new possibilities. Functional interfaces were introduced into the language with Java 8 and helped to bridge the line between object-oriented programming and functional programming. It's arguably one of the most popular features that came out with version 8, which is considered the version that dramatically changed the Java landscape. In short, it allowed writing code that supports first-class functions, albeit through a kind of strange workaround. So what is a first-class function? A first-class function is named the way it is because functions are treated as first-class citizens. Classes definitions aside, essentially it just means that functions themselves can be considered objects. To be clear, Java doesn't technically have functions at all. It has objects and those objects have methods. But practically speaking, functions and methods are basically the same thing, except that methods are coupled to objects. Java reconciles these differences through interfaces, which are basically just names given to a collection of methods. When objects implement an interface, it also has to implement the methods. Functional interfaces are like any other, except they only have one method. We'll do some live coding in a hot second, but before that, just a quick concept check. What are some examples you can think of where implementing a functional interface makes Java code more flexible? Drop your use cases in the comments. Clearly, I could use some better examples after all. With all the background out of the way, let's hop into the code and look at the various ways we can use functional interfaces. So to start out, we have your basic empty project in it with nothing special. We'll put our code in the main method here. And yeah, there is really nothing to run at the moment. So we will get started by creating our functional interface. And right now we're just gonna do something called a string concatenator. So what this is gonna do is it will return a string with the concatenate method from an array of strings. And yeah, that's about it. We plug in an array of strings and out we should expect a string. And so we need to implement this. Let's implement it from something we'll call a concat service. And just to make it so we don't need to continually create a new array. We're just going to store a string array here. In the constructor. And then we'll also have a public void method simply to print the concatenation. And that's going to take a string concatenator. And then let's surround it in a nice pretty border. And then here. Then we'll also print our result of concatenating on our stored array of strings. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way where we create our array. Um, same thing. Hmm. Concat service. Let's just go do hello world of Java. All right, 
So now we have to plug in a string concatenator into our print concatenation method. So since this is an interface, let's start off our first implementation we'll do like any other. We're going to go ahead and make a class. And let's go ahead and make that a delimiter concatenator. And that's going to implement string concatenator. So let's implement our method, which is the concatenate method. So first, let's similar to how we did with the string array. Let's go ahead and store a delimiter that's decided through the constructor. Pretty basic structure here. And now what we're going to do, so we'll create a string builder, build. And let's just go ahead and surround our whole thing with the delimiter, including in between. So we just do a little enhanced for loop. And then we'll go ahead and append to our builder a string. And we'll also append our delimiter. And then we just go ahead and return the builder as a string. Simple enough. So what this will do is simply surround it with the delimiter and then in between each word or each string, really, it will include the delimiter. So let's give that a shot. Uh, delimiter concatenator. And let's start off with, let's just do a tilde. That's a nice looking character. And then see what it looks like when we plug it in. Now, what this is doing is the delimiter is an implementation of the string concatenator interface. So when we plug it into print concatenation on the concat service, it's a valid argument here. And so it will simply call the concatenate method on our delimiter concatenator and then run that through our array of strings that we plugged in over here, the hello world of Java. So let's run that and see what it looks like. And would you look at that nice and fancy looking little delimiter. So that's nothing new. If you've implemented interfaces before, you've probably seen an implementation pretty similar to that. So let's do something actually interesting with functional interfaces. What we're going to do is not do anything at all besides inline. We're going to make something called a lambda function. And this lambda function will just not even name at all. Integer to string x dot length. So in this case, we're creating an implementation of the string concatenator through just an inline function like this. So it's taking as its argument the array of strings, and then this little arrow is indicating that we're moving from parameters to function, and then we're returning a single string. And when you only have one line like this for a functional interface, you can go ahead and skip the brackets, the return statement, all the semicolons, if it's just one line, all you need is for that line to result in what your return value is. So in this case, our return value would be a string. So this would match the signature under the assumption x is going to be a string array, which since it's being plugged into our concat service, we have a stored one it will automatically run against. And so let's run that and see what it looks like. It should be four. And would you look at that? We have the number four. 
because it's just grabbing the count here of one, two, three, four. It's pretty simple. Now, what if we wanted kind of a more complex implementation, not necessarily complex enough to deserve a class, and we maybe wanted to use it multiple times. So what we can do in those cases is we can actually store these Lambda functions inside of variables. So let's go over to the concat service and let's go ahead and make a default concatenator. String concatenator. And we're just gonna call this default concat. And so we can use the same Lambda notation but this time, we may need more than one line for this one. So we're going to go ahead and put brackets. And this is still assignment, so we need the semicolon at the end of the statement. And then inside of these brackets, it's really just like any other method you would write, except now we don't really have it with method notation. We're taking a lambda function and we're assigning its name by assigning it to a variable. This is where the first class functions kind of comes in. Um, so let's go ahead and make a string builder as well. And I think for this one, let's just print out a list. So what we're gonna do, the basic for loop structure, and then we're going to append our string and for each one we're just going to do a new line and then we'll return the builder built to a string pretty basic and so let's make this what happens if we don't provide any argument at all so let's go ahead and overload this method with a zero argument implementation and all we're gonna do is call this but with our default concat method so if we go over here and we simply call service print concatenation but we don't provide any arguments we should see hello world of Java put down as a list each item on their own line and ta-da, we have a nice little laundry list out of our array now, along with all of our other implementations. So to quickly review, functional interfaces, which is this one, is just like any other, but it just has one method, and this can be implemented through a class with the classical implementation of any interface. It can also be implemented in line which doesn't require brackets or return statement if you keep it to one line, and this is just completely unnamed. And then we can use this same syntax to assign it to a variable for later reuse, but not necessarily as a method, so that we can plug in and output like that. And this should really sort of enhance our ability to make more flexible code that can take a process as a parameter rather than just raw data. And with that, we've gone over all of our common cases you'll come across with functional interfaces. To sum up, we've looked at what a functional interface does, what a first class function is, and how these are implemented in real world Java code. Before you go, check out the description for a link to a little challenge I have for you to try your hand at functional interfaces. Also, naturally, the code we wrote here can also be found in the description. So help yourself to it if you want the reference. Until next time, catch you later, coders.